Hey everybody, this is Derek Stevens, the crow on the forums doing the crow's nest, and welcome back to another MMO class. Tonight we're going to be talking about minions. I've got me uh, three or four different minions uh, for a game all concepty outy. And those are not actual words, but I'm making up as I go along. Words anyway. What are words but words? Ask Nelson. Speaking of Nelson, Fifty Shades of Nelson, say hi. Hey. Hey. Who else is here? Go ahead and bring in the gang. Roll call. Sound off if you're inside. Hey, it's Wolf. Yo, hey, kids. Wolf. Mr. Steve, how you doing, man? Oh, hanging in there. Good, good, good. Doing the max. Hello. Hey, Hello. Guys, Richard. Hey, Richard. Good to have everybody on board. I know we have more filtering than as we, we talk, and they're welcome to raise their hand and get inside the conversation as well. So, a uh, quick recap of last week. We talked a little bit about uh, I get some classes, um, what we want to see happen uh, as far as like snipers and melee weapons and stuff like that and characteristics and then we start talking about the minions and that's what I've developed uh, for this week are the Elysian minions. And Mr. Wolf, you got yours developed for the human side, correct? <laughs> I, I have two of them. Hey, two's better than none. We can do some tonight. Uh, I look forward to actually drawing in class tonight. We can discuss, you know, the ins and outs, what we think, uh, because this is a fluid, I guess, game, for lack of better terms, and I want everyone's input and stuff. So, um, design guys go first. How are you guys doing tonight? Um, well, this week is not really... There's not really been much film this week. Um, I've been mostly thinking about the stat system and the uncategorized uh, things so far, so things like the exact value of health um, and things like how long we want fights to take place, uh, how long we want the fights to be. Um, I've not really come up with any answers yet. I'm thinking because, seriously, going back to my educational days, attention spans are so damn short, darn short now. I don't really, I see pros and cons for fights lasting a long time, but if you only have 5v5 and your fifth person, say, has to flake out for whatever reason, and there's a penalty, maybe fights should not go on super long. But at the same time, the longer the fights go on, I believe the more strategy that you can, well, you can utilize. There's a difference between... Um, like matches, which seems to be what you're talking about, and each individual instance of fighting, um, of combat, which is more what I'm talking about. So it's a case of does an interaction between a, any group of characters last, a, you know, two or three seconds, or does it last 30 seconds or a minute? I got you. In the space of a 40-minute game or something like that. Well, what are the pros and cons? If we make it last a long time, uh, we won't have as many kills. But we can make the the animations look really cool. Uh, the main the main issues come down to um, stagnation of combat because if you have very long combat mechanics, you end up with people just kind of not really thinking about what they're doing, uh, and they just get into a habit of going through their um, kind of routine of what they do, whether the, what for what their class they are. So some some of the stuff you kind of see in WoW raids at the moment where people are just kind of mindlessly going through the motions. There's also, if the longer the longer fights go on, the kind of higher you need, the, the higher variance between the amount of health the character has, or characters on average have, and the amount of damage they do. So if you want fights to be very short, you want that range to be quite low. So, for example, if your character did 100 damage for every attack, if you wanted fights to take a short amount of time, you might give um, the average character about 300 health. If you wanted to take sort of a medium long, medium to long time, you might give them um, sort of 3,000 health because then it's 10 hits to kill them. Or if you right. wanted a very long fight, you might give them you know 30,000 hits or something ridiculous like that. Have um, you ever played? Uh, speaking of that, there's there's a video game app, and I don't remember what it is, but you have to build these turrets. And these little minions like come at god awful speeds at you, like, to, and there's, there's, they just keep going and going, and you have to stop them. 
Yeah, the tower, tower defense. defense. The, yeah, yeah, there you go. That's that's the one. I, I like that aspect because it is so fast paced that your your heart starts racing and you don't have a lot of time to think. And one mistake can ruin it all. That that was a fun aspect of the game. Yeah. Um, Do we want something like that? There should be a certain amount of um, kind of expedience to things. Um, I mean, essentially, I'm I'm thinking around the sort of 10 seconds or so. So you might have an instance where you, you're getting your characters together, you're looking for an, for an instance to, to attack, uh, to engage on your enemy, and you might be doing that for you know, upwards of 30 seconds, just kind of looking for the opening. But then the actual engaging, the actual fight, the actual doing damage might only take 5 to 10 seconds. But, um, let, me, let me ask you this. What does uh, a game like League, uh, League of Legends or Dota do? Um, it's pretty much as, as I described there. You have this kind of setup phase where the where the two teams are sort of dancing around each other, um, and then you have relatively small health pools to the range of damage characters do. Uh, but you do have quite a high range between characters of, of health, so you might get some characters that health have health around kind of the 600 odd, 300, 600 odd mark. Where you might get others that have over a thousand, one thousand two hundred, um, so, depending so on their class. How fast? How fast do the battles go? Um, it's difficult to put like an like a second, a seconds number on it per se, but well, basically they take. Do one of the best things to do is you go and if you go and watch um, any kind of YouTube clip of, of generic fights that aren't kind of the extremely professional league, um, it's kind of not enough time to think about exactly what's going on, but enough time to kind of see what's happening and respond to it in a sort of pre not pre learnt but in a in a sort of automatic way. Well let me ask you this, do you think they do it right and should we uh, do what they do or is is there something um, that you find that doesn't work with that and uh, that we could do better? Um, there's not so much what we could do better in this case, but it's what we want to change. One of the things that we're changing from the League of Legends style game is we're changing it to a third person camera instead of a top down camera. This puts us in a position where you have less vision around your character. Uh, you can only really see sort of 90 degrees or a bit more than that, 120 odd degrees of, of in front of you or at any one area, which kind of means that we need to slow combat down a bit because you can't see. Um, if you, if you can see, if you have a high degree of vision around your character, you can see people approaching you. You can work out what they're going to do, which means that you can kind of almost pre-response. You can you have a certain amount of pre-response to what they're going to do. So if you see someone coming at you from behind, you can hit your sprint button and race off away from them. Whereas if it was in a third-person camera, you would specifically have to look behind you to see that they're coming. Um, it's that kind of thing with the third person camera we have to keep in mind. We're also not going for a highly competitive gameplay model, which means that we can kind of dial down sort of almost twitch response, um, which you find in games like um, uh, Unreal Tournament or even the COD games, Call of Duty games, where it's all based on immediate reaction to stimuli. So if you see someone, you should immediately shoot. Um, kind of dialing down on that, that sort of side of things. So it's more about thinking about what you're going to do and planning and kind of pre-processing. And then in the instance of executing it, um, you can analyze what's happening and respond to it. In LOL, that time period, that time frame, as I said, is it, depending on the fight, it can be a couple of seconds, um, can be two or three seconds to up to 10 or so. Depending, it really depends on the, on the exact details of the fight. Uh, which is why it's such a difficult topic to kind of approach. Yeah, well, it, it sounds it sounds like you have a uh, a rough idea of uh, 
at least a starting point, and then from there, I, I would say we would just uh, adjust it once we're actually able to um, experience it. Yeah, there's a lot of that currently. Um, I'm sort of in a position where I'd like, you know, if we had it, if we had a system that was up and running, um, then we could, you know, really test it and modify it and tweak it and things. But um, yeah, so we're, we're not really at that point yet. So a lot of this is is theoretical. Well, Nelson's got another hour to get this up and running. <laughs> yeah, no. Not even a word from him. Um, okay, not possible, huh? Like unlikely. Unlikely. <laughs> how like is it? Response. How is it going, by the way? Just like honestly. <laughs> uh, I haven't had a whole lot of. Uh... No, that makes sense. There's going to be a time, though, where we're going to need that aspect to start testing things. I'm looking forward to that, but I know Nelson will need some help with that. Which brings me to, uh, I know Steve is here. Hey, Mr. Steve. Hey, buddy. I know you've been busy, too, but uh, I know probably within the next week we'll have those comic book pages up. And uh, My whole thing is if we can create a banner with a link someplace to... Uh, the comic book page and start advertising for more artists wanted. That might help us out too, so we can have more people doing more things. Maybe we can advertise somebody. Well, Nelson, would you want someone helping you out? Because th there's the chance of them mucking up code, and then you have to go back and fix everything. I mean, what would what would your ideal situation be? Uh, it's probably going to have to be developed independently for now. Um, also, Steve, you're smoking. <laughs> And? <laughs> and you can hear it really, really loudly. <laughs> okay. Is it upsetting you? Yes, it is, because I'm sitting here at my desk. <laughs> All right, I will mute myself. So anyway, um, I'm open for some ideas. Uh, we got a good team here, but again, it's a very small team. We need to be able to reach out to more people to develop more things. Um, we need more 3D artists and uh, some programmers, and I'm open for some situ uh, suggestions for that from anybody here. Either that or each one of us has to get uh, a lot bigger. Or just ha don't sleep and have no other life but this. I think he means because we're a very small team. Oh, uh. I thought you, I was like, <laughs> really bigger? I'm working out. I'm trying. Um, all right. Back to the topic at hand. Uh, those pages will be up and the banner will be up soon, correct, Mr. Steve? Yeah, one of these days, yeah. We're working on it. Okay, good. Good, I appreciate it. Uh, we'll get more pages. We will get more pages. As soon as that's up, I will draw like the wind. And we have uh, like 13, don't we? We have 10. 10, 13, I've heard it both ways. <laughs> we have there's, 10. there's 10, I believe, at least done. There's ten that I, I have know seen. about in progress. That's good. We have ten done. That that is fine. Um, I will be uh, free to do more of this particular art stuff. I'm switching uh, lifestyles around, and I want to focus more on this actually, because uh, it's something I believe in. Steve and I had a, a long talk just today about it, and it's it's time to, like I say, put up or shut up. We've done so much work on it already. Uh, so I'm retooling the way I'm working at home to be able to focus mostly on 3D buzz right now, which is good. Uh, whereas I was focusing on all sorts of different freelance and three to four projects at once, and it was tearing me my attention span to this, this, and this, and not being able to focus like a laser on one particular thing. So that is one good, I guess you can say, development this week. So that is good. Please, someone else say this is good and make me happy. This is good. This is very right. good. Very good. All right. Um, so what else for the development team? Uh, I, I like the aspect we're copying, but we're making it our own. Yeah. Um, something that came to mind a few days ago, this is, I keep having these ideas which are more like phase two ideas and current model ideas, partly because I know the, um, oh, the phase one stuff is kind of based basically requires an engine 
to be tested with at the moment. Um, so you just have to wait until that's you know getting more resolved. But um, this concept comes in with the out of or the permanent items that players can uh, put onto their characters. And there's a series, a design series of videos, um, which is called, um, I'll remember, oh, um, Extra Credits. It's on the PA TV, which is uh, Penny Arcade TV, which is a very good series if you like design, by the way. Um, but they had, a, they had a couple of episodes on collectible, um, collectible games. Now, they were mostly focused on things like um, Magic the Gathering, or essentially games that request or games that encourage you to collect various different aspects of gameplay, and it got me thinking that we could do something similar to that with the um, the the gear between matches, our permanent gear. So currently, we have a system where players purchase uh, players gain gold and levels from doing matches and then they use the the they gain so ranks um, and gold from matches when they gain a rank they get to unlock abilities to put on their characters and when they gain gold they can spend that in the game world and buy um, permanent items permanent items affect the characters out of match so sort of persistent stats how much damage they do how much health they have etc and they also have a small amount of small effect on um, character stats within a match. Where I'd like to bring in a sort of collectibles concept is the idea of um, the idea of having like s small bonuses for having sets of things. Um, so if you buy all the buy all uh, items in a particular set, you might get something, make it a bonus. Now. The problem with giving stat bonuses to these um, persistent items is that they might roll over into the matches and cause the game to be unbalanced. So I was actually thinking of focusing them more on interesting and fun things rather than straight stat boosts. So things like giving characters um, pets or giving them particular, you know, particular recoloring or giving them the ability to you know, teleport to a particular city based on the collection of items that they have purchased. Now, when you take into account that I'd like, in theory, to have all the items that players buy in the uh, persistent items that the players buy be generated by other players, um, we can bring in a sort of randomization element where, let's say, player A makes a helmet, uh, let's say a helmet of protection which has a certain number of certain stat boost. Um, it is. It has that item will have a level, which is sort of a requirement uh, to use it. It may also have a value, depending you know, a gold value, and it will also have a kind of a material which decides, uh, or something that decides what enchantments, enchantments and stat boosts that item has. So, player A decides they're going to sell this item on the marketplace and player B buys it. So player B can then either keep it for themselves or sell it on. If they decide to keep it for themselves, it is then given a randomly generated affinity, which is essentially a, uh, a pseudo set. So you might have something that has an affinity for um, teleporting to city Y. Obviously it would have a better name than that, but if you get all the, um, if you get like three items with teleport to CY, you gain the ability to do so. If you get have four, you get a reduction in the cooldown or something like that. Um, essentially, however many of the items you have with that affinity is the, the stronger the effect is. Now, obviously, there would have to be a limited number of these, otherwise it gets ridiculous. Um, but in theory, it would be kind of a little bonus to characters. Now. One of the problems with this system is that, obviously, if you buy an item and you unlock it, its affinity and find out it's something you don't want, but you want to keep the item, there needs to be a way of essentially junking the 
extra enchant you have on there that doesn't affect how good the item is, but let's say it's something you, let's say you, you don't want that affinity. You can, I like the idea of being able to remove that affinity um, and then get a bonus to deciding what the next affinity is for the next item you unlock. So it's based on your characters. Now, another, another idea is that um, the items that you get, your permanent items, should be changeable, um, sorry, should be tradable with other characters within your account, as long as they're in the same faction. Um, and any any item you have purchased that you have you have chosen to unlock the affinity on is then locked to that account. So it's essentially a system of encouraging people to collect all the different items and all the different sets, so you can get all the different different effects, uh, and then they can swap which armor they want in and out between games, which which gear they want in in and out as the you know in the persistent world, um, and if they like a particular effect they can choose to kind of grind almost, which is something I hate the term of, but it's not a bad analogy here. They can kind of grind away to get the gear that they want with the affinity that they want. I like that idea. It, 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 to me, it means that you make your character more specialized the way you want to play it. Yeah. Mm. Anybody else thoughts? Anybody else still there? Yeah, they all died. Oh, that sounds good to me. I like the idea of making up my character. I understand we have to have a, a base character to, to start out from. I'm all cool with that. But if I can make it my own character, especially if we customize the character's look, which I know is up to Nelson to be able to let us do that, yes or no. But I think that will be very good for, uh, for gameplay. Uh, you're not saying that uh, uh, it's just going to be uh, things that affect uh, visuals of the character, right? Yeah, you're just saying that at first that's what you want to concentrate um, on? Well, no, it'll be, it'll be minor bonuses, minor yeah. non, non-effective bonuses, so something like it wouldn't be a stat boost, so it wouldn't give you plus 20% health for having affinity for health or something, but it might you might have you know, affinity for bunnies, so that if you have five items that have affinity for bunnies on, you can summon a small bunny that will follow you around in the persistent world. That kind of thing. Uh, I'm not suggesting that as an actual example, but um, it's that kind of extra nice Come little on. bit of interesting interest. That, uh, um, you're talking about. The, I thought you were talking about persistent world things that would affect the uh, the. Uh, matches the uh, no I want, to, I want to limit those basically because the more the more you have the, right. the more things you have in the persistent world um, which is essentially going to be a be its own high level thing uh, compared to the matches which are their own low level entity um, it's going to be more unbalancing it's going to right oh, obviously the, yeah uh, but, so I want to avoid that kind of thing but I mean, if you do what you could, you could say you can only bring one item into that at a, at a time, and everybody could bring one item, and none of them would be um, ex exceptional. So I don't know. Potentially, um, I'd much rather give a general rule that um, a certain flat percentage, possibly based on your rank, uh, for stat increases from your persistent items gets transferred into matches. So it might be like almost 0.5% or something. Considering that your persistent items might have 200 plus 200 on them, and that your level 1 stats inside a match might be 20 odd, that starts becoming significant. In the persistent world, are we still having the uh, same uh, system of, of uh, items make the skills increase? Um, I would keep the same stats, if that's what you're asking, and then therefore if you buy um, 
like you would have an item in the in a match that would give you attack damage boost. No, no, no in the persistent world, not the yeah, light. Hold on. Oh. Um, I was going to say if you have an if you have an item in the in the match that gives you something like plus ten uh, attack damage, in the persistent world, I would still have an item that gave you plus ten attack damage, um, in theory, but it wouldn't be the same item. It would be uh, name differently, it would have more effects, it would do slightly more than um, in the matches. So it would uh, be a, a, so a, so a, a second set of, of, uh, of gear. What I'm, what I'm asking is, is that how you level up in uh, the persistent world, still the skills, or is that, I mean, not uh, still with items that you, uh, up in your skills, or is that just for the arena? Um, it's the same methodology, so you would get a small increase of your character uh, persistent stats when you rank up um, rather than level up, which is what happens in a match, and you would basically increase the majority of your stats using items rather than using your using any sort of leveling system. Yeah. Okay, so some of it would be automatic and some of it would be... Uh, yeah, but but it would be it would be the variation between gaining so sort of two to four out of a hundred for a rank out of say ten or ten to fifteen ranks, opposed to buying an item that might give you plus fifty uh, at the highest level to a stat. So obviously, buying items is more effective than than um, gaining a rank, but gaining a rank is kind of a more general everything in powers, and it's less specific. Um, which and kind of maps your progress rather than defines what your character does. Well, uh, can can you? I mean, if, if let's say if you're able to give money away, couldn't you? If everything is money dependent, uh, couldn't you give money to uh, someone who just started out and suddenly they're um, they're really good? Well, this is one of the things that I want to take from, um, well, it's from generic RPGs in general, but it's also specifically in this case uh, inspired by uh, Borderlands in that all the weapons will have a level, um, all the gear will have a level, sorry, that you have must reach to be able to use it. Okay. That makes sense. And Borderlands is a great game. I know Steve likes it. There's lots of interesting uh, mechanics they introduced there, which have never really been applied to an MMO-style environment. I mean, uh, Borderlands is kind of a pseudo MMO in some ways, in the sense that it has uh, it doesn't have a persistent world, but it does have characters. Maybe it has persistent characters that you can transfer between sort of um, instanced worlds. So there is a certain amount of kind of persistence there, MMO-style there. Um, it's not massively multiplayer, but it's it's it it's some kind of, of M MMO FPS RPG. I think that's what I like about it is there's elements of all of those in it. If you drop the first M, I'd agree with you. So it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess MMO. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> details, silly details. <laughs> I like that we're thinking outside the box, and uh, this is the time to do that. I, I do have to interject that it being said, I now do want a bunny that will follow me around that is <laughs> that is Python esque and whenever it attacks somebody, a random person in the battle screams out, That rabbit's dynamite. <laughs> that rabbit's dynamite. Hey, speaking of that, this is a bit off topic. Did one of their cast members from Monte Python pass away? Uh years ago. No, yeah. just like recently. Uh no, not really. All right, good. Okay, I thought I seen something. Not, not really. They uh, kind of passed away. A little he's bit. Not dead yet. <laughs> it's only most. <laughs> he's mostly dead. I he's feel dead. better. <laughs> um, they're not fooling they're, anyone. They're getting back together, but uh, to to do some stage shows. Oh, okay, which might that's be what you've seen. So okay, they have yeah. been in the news, but not uh, not terminally. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it it often says the remaining cast members, and that doesn't mean anybody went recently. Just. I just seen a small blurb. I'm like, crap, who passed away? <laughs> anyway, okay, back on topic. That rabbit's dynamite. So, I haven't really had many thoughts in 
opposed to the direction, um, which again, like I said, is more of a um, later phase thing. Um, one thing that has been running through my head a bit is map variation, more in the sense of design rather than, than appearance. Um, I need to start breaking down exactly what parts of the standard um, there's lots of noise in the background there, whoever it is. Steve? Nope, I was muted. That's probably <laughs> me. I'm setting up a new tablet. Mr. Uh, J, how you doing, man? I'm doing really good. Good, glad you're here. You got some art stuff done for us tonight? Um, I have... <laughs> yeah, kind of. I haven't figured out how to get it into the game yet, but I have a sort of a height map to start from for the level. Cool. Good. I was thinking right. I'm starting to sense a lot of crying kittens. <laughs> I, yeah, I actually sure. loaded Nick's uh, loaded Nick's level into CryEngine. So, can you show us that later on? Yes, yes, I can. Brilliant. Okay, back to design. I'm sorry, I'm just like all artsy farts team. Hey, it's alright. I'm partly arts anyway, so um, I'll be interested to see. But I haven't watched your CryEngine stuff yet. Well, um, mind you, I did that in the last few minutes, so it's not terribly spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the um, the big thing at the moment is, as I said, working out exactly how we want, or the exact details of how these maps work, um, and kind of breaking that down into working out how we want to have new map types, if we want new map types. Um, I also would like to take a moment to talk about whoever's typing really loudly, because that's really off-putting. That's probably Nelson. No, Nelson tends to mute himself. Okay. <laughs> um, so, in these kind of games, um, you have the kind of generic RPG roles, which are, as I said before, you know, a tank, uh, a um, TPS, and a support. In games like League of Legends and Dota, you tend to get kind of sub sub class uh, sub roles, which are more about the kind of specific way characters do things. So you might have an assassin. So an assassin is a character that's designed to specifically target another character and kill them. Um, they usually have quite a low amount of health to kind of balance the fact that they are sneaky bastards. Well, completely directed, they do complete direct damage to a one character, um, and that if, if you don't shut them, shut them down early and quickly and effectively, they will completely trounce your entire uh, team. And obviously that's not a good thing. <laughs> um, so that's kind of a sub, a sub role. Uh, similarly you have, um, you obviously have tanks. Um, which are kind of ubiquitous. Um, you might have something known as a, an AD carry, which is a uh, character that's designed to scale, uh, to get better with attack damage and over time. So the longer that character has to gain gold and the quicker they can gain gold to buy items, the better that character will be. Um, that's again one of the sort of sub sub Roles. It's a type of uh, um, AD, not AD carry. It's a type of DPS style character. Whereas for something like um, a support character, you have something like a jungler. Now junglers are a bit complicated, but essentially they use the uh, so they use the map elements to gain XP from an alternative source, and they're also designed to come in behind enemy uh, enemies and um, catch them unawares, not in the same way that an assassin would, but more in a sort of positioning better. And they sort of are designed to break ties. Now, the map is set up in a way to support that uh, with the three lanes in which um, you get characters who fight directly with each other. And they try and keep the other character from gaining gold and experience while doing so themselves. Um, and the junglers exist partly to come into these lanes from the jungle um, and gank, which is the technical 
term, I think, um, but to, to target the, uh, the opposition, get in behind them or come in from the side in some way, um, either kill them, get them to use one of their, some of their resources to, to escape, or to get them um, just to stay away for a, set, for a period of time to allow uh, the allied character to gain experience or, or even in some cases to go back to the shop to buy an item or in some way be useful. Um, so those are some of the sub rules that League of Legends and, and Dota to a lesser extent uses. Um, what we kind of need to do is think about which one of these we'd like to implement ourselves, which, you know, which one of them, which of these um, don't work for us, or if we want to come up with, think about some new ones. Now, as I said with the jungler example, it's really based very heavily on the concept of that map with the three lanes, the jungle area, the river down the middle, having these NPCs in the, in the jungle that you can go and kill. Um, and because that has kind of become ubiquitous to Dota style games, um, and we're going with that kind of similar map type, I'd want to implement that sort of character type, um, that sort of role. I have a couple of character types that, that fulfill it. But one of the things I'd like to do is work out some, some more, some new map types, um, some more interesting map types, and to really push um, kind of a more characterful and a more interesting gameplay style rather than the super competitive, which is basically why um, that map type is sort of ubiquitous within League of Legends and Dota. It's because it's designed to be um, very fair so that players' skill comes across and tactics comes across rather than luck or positioning or um, slight minor imbalances in the map, that kind of thing. Um, they're sort of phased out to, to promote players, individual individuals rather than individuals and teams rather than um, interesting gameplay mechanics. Now, if you've seen um, Lizard's most recent announcement, which is called something Storm, if I remember correctly, essentially it is uh, Heroes of the Storm. That's what it's called. It's a not a MOBA. MOBA is essentially all the characters from um, Blizzard games, so Warcraft, Starcraft, uh, Diablo, they've taken those characters and they've made a sort of Dota style game. So you have a similar map, you have limited abilities, and it's uh, an arena. Um, they are saying that you can't buy items and characters gain levels in a different way, but that doesn't matter. Um, what they've done is they are moving away from the competitive side of things and they are going to bring in apparently more map types and have a wider variance of map, type, map types and have more sort of map based events which is something I'd really like to do because it, as I said before, pulls away from the super serious um, kind of competitive side of things which is just not really what I think this this should be, especially because we don't necessarily have all the tools and all the, you know, very, very expensive servers to keep things running at exactly the prime conditions for players to feel that they're getting the fairness that they kind of quote unquote deserve. Nonsense. <laughs> Can we uh, eventually? I I like to see some maps that are skilled for positioning in one way or another where one team has a disadvantage. Do you think that would be popular at all? Or more skill set? I mean, you have to rely more on skill on one side of the map than the other one? Um, I would advise against a sort of very direct um, variants like that. You end up with basically, I'm not playing on this map because ah, blue team true. are, are you know, yeah, blue team the, the too nerfed on this map. Yeah. The only way I could see something like that working is if you had if if you had um, uh, something where it's like a, a series of maps for a game, like uh, like if someone wins, they push them back. Like maybe you start off there's a middle ground in between, and then well, even that I'm not sure. Um, but I guess I guess if the winner I guess if the winner. Uh, winning team then 
uh, like push the other team back to say their base where they are more fortified. Um, yeah, you kind of get things like that in um, Team Fortress 2, where certain parts, certain right. elements, certain parts of the map, um, when you have slightly longer maps, are balanced for particular teams, for defenders or attackers. Now, one of the things they do is if if there's, let's say, a capture point, so a King of the Hill style map, um, oh sorry, no, if a capture point with multiple capture points, let's say one of them is defendable very easily by the, by red team, uh, what a lot of the level designers will do is have multiple pathways that the blue team can take to gain access to that area while maintaining the, the defensive nature of that position. So it is, it is weighed in favor of the red team, but they have to be permanently looking for where the enemy are coming from. They have to be up on their toes all the time, whereas for blue team they have a lot more um, kind of a randomness in it. They, they have a lot more options, um, whereas, red, like I say, red team is just kind of focused on that one, um, defending that one position at that, at that moment in time. Okay. Now, whether that would translate into a gameplay, into this sort of gameplay mechanics, I'm not sure, um, but I'm certainly open for looking at more interesting gameplay, uh, more interesting game types and maps than just the standard yeah. sort of three lanes that we see, we've seen quite a few times now. So we need to think outside the box. Maybe the first one can be like that because that's where we're heading. But I like the idea of of branching out. Hmm. Yeah, because uh, th that could be all done on one like big map where you start in the middle, and then if you um, if you beat uh, uh, one person's middle base, then you push them back, and then then uh, Everybody spawns at the the next kind of setup. On the, uh, reminds me a bit of paintball. Whenever uh, we we played indoor arenas, as soon as the whistle blows, no matter where you're at in the arena, you are fair game. You you can be hit, and it's all about speed, getting to that stronghold, and then fortifying it. And then you have to find people brave enough, willing to be human shields to get you close enough to uh, to bunker people. Mm. Well, we can we can focus on that kind of thing um, and come up with some different game types um, at some point. But like I said before, we need to we need to focus on uh, the the sort of primary right. um, primary thing to start with. Now, well, Nelson, what do you need from us after we get the height map and all the sort of stuff going on, and we got some really good basics for you? What do you need from us to start, you know, really building this world? Um, nothing at this point. Time. <laughs> Time. Can't help you there, buddy. I wish I could. A quiet corner to cry in, I think, we'll see. <laughs> That's funny. He has that. <laughs> he, he does. I've been to his room several times. But we won't discuss what's in his room. It's scary. Or why you were there. Exactly. <laughs> Nelson... Nelson's awesome. That's all I can say. Um, all right. So we got some food for thought. I like that. Um, anything else from the design team to wrap it up before we do art stuff? Um, not really, no. It's been a bit of a slow week. Um, I purchased a new graphics card, which I had to send back, and I've been a bit distracted by that. Um, so, yeah. I also have a lot of other projects which I'm working on, so this is not not exactly the, the sort of top priority at the moment, unfortunately. Um, partly, as I said before, with the waiting um, for for the engine to be sort of finalised, um, it's sort of quite limiting at the moment. Right. No. No, I understand. I think you're doing a great job. You're, you're bringing stuff to the table that I wouldn't think of. Like I said, I'm an art monkey. I get some good ideas for art. But I like that you bring something tangible, and then from that we can springboard off of it and, and make pretty and cool and ugly things. So I'm happy. Is there anything anybody else in the de design team can do to help you out, Nato? Anything um, you would like to assign? Um, well, I'm not sure exactly who 
in the current group actually does any design. I mean, uh, to a degree, I think Ryan, uh, Richard, although he doesn't make it to most of these meetings, he does keep up with them week to week. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'll have a think, um, but currently, as I said, it's just, I mean, if someone wants to take a look at, um, I need to update the, the, the um, game design document, but if someone wants to take a look at the stat system and work out a weighting system, to uh, design characters off of, that would be quite useful. Um, I think it would require quite a bit of discussion between the effectiveness of certain stats, and it would also need to be balanced, uh, sort of rebalanced as we go. Um, again, it's another another thing where testing is, is crucial, but somewhere a sort of starting point to springboard off would be useful on that side of things. Yeah, at least we'd have some numbers to start with that would work. Yeah, yeah. All, All right, right, cool. Well, okay, should we take our break then if we're going to go to the art side next? Let's go uh, ahead and take a seven-minute break. We'll come back and do art stuff. I'm really anxious and excited tonight to see what people's come up with and a lot to share with on my end. And um, I'm looking for some good feedback or some bad feedback, whatever that may take. So uh, Mr. Fifty Shades of Nelson gives a seven-minute pause for the cause, and we shall be back. Everybody, welcome back. Here's truly Derek T. Stevens, the crew on the forums. Fifty Shades of Nelson, Mr. Steve Curtis, uh, Nato Wolf, uh, Richard, uh, Mr. Jisba, and everybody else is here. Uh, to make it official, Eve, who is a great artist, says hi. So if you're listening to this on recordings, Miss Eve, I did, I did do my bit. You said hi, and we'd say hi back. Uh, last week, again, to recap, we talked about the minions, uh, some, some bots, AIs, what they might look like, and we've come up with, uh, our goal is to come up with three looks apiece. And as I'm doing this, hold on, let me get to the proper spot here. I'm thinking about the Elethians. I love the, the Elethians, and I, I think they're spiritual, and they have this sort of rock essence because of the crystals. Let me come here first. So um, I'm thinking because these are wild creatures, uh, the, the Elysians, they might be able to Im implement some sort of dog-like creature, more like a hyena, but we have some rocks jetting off of it, so it, it's it's a byproduct of, you know, the, the crystallized forms that are around them. That's how they can control these animals to a certain point. So, and, so is, that, is that a melee um, bot, or a... Uh, uh, well, it came up with three different AIs for three different levels. This would be the weakest of the three that I've come up with, uh, three different tiers. And, and again, I'm not for sure how the game would work, but I, I was assuming like you only have X amount of points uh, to, to choose from or one spawning point. These things may be a little bit faster than the other ones, so they're not as, as strong, but they can get to point A to point B well, faster. Well, what was said last time is that uh, uh, one needed to be for melee, one for um, standard range, uh, one that's good at taking down things like towers, so it's like kind of like a siege okay, well, thing. And I'm thinking this would be melee, melee then, yeah, because of uh, looks like it. the whole hands, and I, I like to see them, again, faster than faster than the average dog, hey? Eh? And doing the whole silhouette, what it looked like uh, to get a good read. My main concern is a quadruped for animation purposes. I didn't know if that would be a problem with you guys wanting to implement, a, you know, a quadruped in this game. Well, we're probably going to um, need it. I can probably do that in Max with uh, with the cat system. Okay. Cool. So then. Again, with the Elethians, because they're sort of wild creatures, and uh, the affinity for wildlife, this is my, my, my idea of the first line of defense, the melee, they're fast and they're vicious. So going along again, hold on, I like them. is the second tier, or taking down towers, you have these huge rock-like creatures made of crystal that uh, the Elethians can control, that they just summon these huge things out of their crystal vats, or whatever you want to call it, and they can take down, and again, just different looks. I have a better one right here of 
of the sky. You know, we can play around with colors and stuff like that, but I like the idea of having crystal like forms and having them huge again to bring down you know towers make them very slow so it takes a while to get to point A to point B but very strong can take a lot of damage uh, so they can have time to tear down those towers here's the bad rock like, ah, look at me I got red eyes I must be evil so uh, that was that one nice super and, pose by the way thank you very much and the one you see me playing around with a lot right now, uh, Steve and I talked today a little bit. I'm like, well, how about some sort of ape creature? But I, I'm like, no, I really want to go with the spiritual sort of essence of the Aletheans. So my idea is to have these Aletheian-type creatures, but ghosts, like their ancestors. That's why I try to make them look a little more transparent, like you have a battle going in the background, and you have this nice. little... Um, Gobot looking thing in the background that you know the humans are trying to fight uh, But we can use them for range attacks where they can throw like ghost essence if for lack of a better term for ranged attacks uh, But make them transparent. I think it'd be a really cool model idea to do and I'm not for sure about particle effects You know, I'm not for sure you know how taxing that would be on the engine to, to have glow and specular roll off and all that sort of stuff but those are my ideas for uh, my three units. I don't think uh, a level of transparency is really going to cost much. But... Okay. And then, you know, we can do with uh, my idea of the war paints uh, is even going even further. Uh, different war paints can mean different things. Maybe one does fire. Fire does X amount of damage more or less depending on what unit, you know, the humans have. Uh, maybe one is uh, specifically for area effects, and that's painted different. So when you run into it, you know, oh, crap, this guy has this power here. And it gives it more uh, control for whoever's playing and, and utilizing this, this team. Was it three or four that we were supposed to do? I thought, Just three. I thought there was another one, that some kind of effects or something. Um, there's ranged... Uh, there's melee, ranged, and there's a uh, siege, and then there's um, what's known as super minions, which are um, empowered by a map event, is the best way of putting it. Ah. Okay. I did not utilize that one. Maybe, maybe we'd have some sort of tree come to life. Look at me! I'm from Lord of the Rings! Oops! Wrong place! <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, to a degree, we may have to determine what the map event is before we decide on that, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's um, usually taking down one of the opponent's base structures that causes them to spawn, but I'm not sure how I feel about that. Okay. Um, but I do want some kind of some kind of element like that. Now, there's this element that, that pops up. Does it attack both sides? Um, no, I mean, some, it's um, it's an action by one team that uh, causes them to spawn for their team. Uh, okay, in, gotcha. In games like in League of Legends, it's destroying um, a base structure called an inhibitor, um, which causes any any mob, any siege um, mob in that lane that, well, it causes any siege mob that would spawn in that lane after the uh, inhibitor has been destroyed to spawn as a super minion, um, which does more damage and but otherwise acts like a siege minion. Okay. But I'm not sure if I want to keep that as I don't know. I'm not sure I want to keep that specific detail. Um, but it's some kind of some kind of map event based on players' actions that causes them to spawn. All right. I can dig that. We can come up with some different concepts for that for sure. Uh, but those are my ideas. What do you think, Wolf? Uh, I like them. Right, good. I think they'd be very interesting. Uh, especially in just the, the whole idea of the third person running up on these guys. Uh, the ghost ones scare me for some reason. Maybe because I'm afraid of ghosts in real life. Because they do exist. I don't care what you say, Steve. Uh, okay. I think the visuals shut up. I, <laughs> I think the visuals would be really cool, uh, especially with the whole aspect of range. I could see them sucking life points, you know, different visual effects for that. I think that'd be kind of cool too. 
How about you, Mr. J? I mean, you're the art director guy. You're muted, Mr. J. Yep, I was muted. I like the direction you're going with them. They look they look pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I really don't have much to say. I'm I get distracted by my tablet a little bit. <laughs> new. At least he's honest. At least he's honest. Shiny and new. All right. Any any thoughts from anybody else before we go to another artist? Me. Go to me. Go, go to it, Wolf. Mr. Fifty Shades, can you take Mr. Wolf's screen, pretty please? Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. I just lost you. Am I back? Yeah, you're back. Yeah, yeah I can hear you. It right. takes a second to transfer yeah. a bit. Looking good. So explain, Lucy, explain. All right, this is uh, 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 the ranged unit. So he uh, got him kind of positioned like he's holding a rifle. Um, but I didn't draw that. Uh, I try to make some of these designs still still looking still thinking of uh, uh, all the things that we're talking about kind of this the style the the customization that kind of looks like it's uh, 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 you know not not an assembly line but actually had um, been handcrafted and that kind of thing like it, like these these are little design things they could be um, indented and stuff like that but I love the, the torso but I have to be honest it looks like he's wearing a lace bra it looks like he's looking what he has a lace bra on it oh. does kind of look like he's wearing lingerie yes <laughs> <laughs> to be kind of blunt we're, we're very open here. <laughs> you never know, the guy that made it could have liked Hilaeus underwear on his robot. It's, don't ask, don't right. tell. But I love I love the indentions that you have on the torso. Those rock. They have depth, they have feel to them. Uh, there's volume there. All I can see now is the Monty Python skit with the dancing army. <laughs> How dare you all. <laughs> It's because we love you, baby. It's because we love you. Yeah, um, got these little plug things. I was actually thinking maybe a, a plug here to here would look good as well. I think my biggest problem with it so far is that it looks a little bit too human. Um, and it has a bit, I mean, it's proportions. Um, I think. I would probably want to take it in more of a kind of industrial um, industrial size. So maybe like when humans left Earth, they brought a bunch of like industrial robots with them to help them build their new world. And then you know the Elithians turned hostile, so they had to retrofit these huge hulking machines to fight for them. That's a really good idea. Well, I, I don't know what, what do you mean? Like how? how... Say, uh, you know, the well, humans uh, come here and they bring these huge robots to farm uh, to, to bring them. Remember that robotic suit that uh, they had in Aliens? Uh huh. That would be like an industrial robot. So, what if someone converted that minus the person inside of it to be a weapon? Right, that, but that, that would be more of a melee unit, I would think. It would be, but it's, I mean, it's that kind of men it's that kind of switch. But, but that like kind of mentality, practice. these yeah. the robots were service things that were used in heavy labor and brought in mm -hmm. to fight. You mean like instead of the customized look, kind of just look like? Uh, well, it could have a customized look, but um, more heavy duty looking, I guess. Yeah, right. Just as long as you can still wear a lacy bra. Uh, <laughs> well, they come in all sizes, so that's okay. okay. I want my robots with double D's. Yeah. She yells, I'll scratch your eyes out, Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> that rabbit's dynamite. No, uh, I, like, I really like the torso, and I understand where you're going for a more sleek look for a... Uh, for the ranged attack. You, you don't I, like uh, the legs? 
Baby, I love legs. <laughs> is it? I, is it I this like part? the whole design. I think I would just beef it some. Beef it? Yeah, make that, it beefier. Well, it's supposed to. It's supposed to be kind of a weaker, weaker range kind of thing, like uh, uh, like uh, like all this this extra armor is all in front, so we can. Uh, Generally, the ranged and melee units in these games don't look too much different. Like it's more they have like w obvious weapons like that. Yeah, that but sort of I, set them apart. I think they should look different so you could be able to tell them really easily. Yeah, generally they have like ridiculously big, bulky weapons that show it off. Like the melee ones will have a big shield and like some sort of like blunt sword, and the ranged ones will have pokey things and like a pointy hat or like sensors coming off their head or something. Well, I like the idea what Mato was saying, how, because we have to think about story, how the humans weren't really right. looking for a fight or didn't expect a fight. I like the idea that these robots should be service robots of some sort, big, bulky. But I understand Wolf's point of view, though, too, and, and Mr. J's. I mean, and, and certainly, I mean, service robots can look like this depending on well, what the, the job is, is but... Um, I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, where the legs and arms meet the hips and shoulders, I would robot that up, kind of like you did the ankles and knees. and Yeah. Like, okay, like instead, yeah. instead of looking like an actual leg, I would gear that up and make it more industrial looking. The legs and the arms? Yeah, well, where, like, where the legs meet the hips and the arms meet the shoulders were... They, they've uh -huh. got robotic joints at the wrists like the, and elbows, yeah, like yeah. that, but, but, but have those it here. joints, they look kind of human-esque. Yeah, I, I would kind of robot that up. Uh -huh. Yeah, w one thing, I accidentally um, drew it a little small, so the resolution isn't that great, so I um, had trouble with some of the details. Plus, I'm, yeah, hands are hard anyway. And, so, but, uh, and, and of course, you know the modelers will completely take liberty with your drawing. Right. So you know who knows what we'll get. Right. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was also thinking that I could just uh, draw the hands uh, for this guy, just like a big hand, like trying to put uh, detail because they're pretty plain. I can, I can think of some ways of making them kind of similar to what you said with the joints and stuff, to making that a lot more interesting. But yeah, uh, I like it. Okay. I'm still going to model it with lace. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one turned out uh, a lot better than the other one. I, I rushed for the other one, so it's uh, it's not going to look as good. But <laughs> so, uh, I'm thinking um, the melee guy, what I was thinking is... Uh, I've looked at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody with their jokes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about that. Um, anyway, uh, that is kind of energy. Uh, let's call it a sword, I guess. Um, to to be able to use that as a melee weapon, I was thinking he could attack uh, twice, kind of. Uh, 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 you know, from the right to the left and the left to the right back again, and then from here you could shoot. I was actually not thinking of this big thing. Uh, I was actually thinking of something more like a sawed-off shotgun, but uh, I didn't uh, really have time to um, look for references and get uh, figure something out. Uh, so I just drew this, but... Uh, so I was thinking, if, if it's meant for combat, why not instead of on the hand, it just is the hand. I, I, you know, I was thinking that that was my initial thing, but and I, but I kind of realized that that's, I think that's pretty much, uh, uh, pretty similar to what, uh, uh, the Bioshock thing did. Plus, plus, it, it seemed like, uh, it seemed like. It, this this gives him more functionality, so that jams at least he can punch or he can lift things or something. So I just uh, that's why. Okay. 
I like your, your thought process where you're going with it. And this is what's yeah. a beautiful thing about concept. And a lot, what a lot of people don't understand, for every one drawing you see that's really good, there's probably about 20 to 30 that uh, are not. And they're all rejected. Right. Well, I mean, this this is something I'd, I'd have to uh, toy uh, more with. I, 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 like, I like the concept, but, I mean, it just it hasn't really uh, turned out. And I know this is kind of a McBain... Is, is that what his name is? Or just Bane? Oh, Bane? Bane. Bane. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I, it actually was just supposed to be a, a protection thing on the jaw, and then I, I thought, uh, well, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily really need a mouth, so maybe it's just kind of bigger, and then it kind of like, oh, uh, kind of doing the Bane thing, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, I, have a, I also have the idea for... Um, uh, for this siege thing, which I'll um, work on for next week. Darn it, Wolf, now all I can hear is, so you really <laughs> want a quarter pounder with cheese. <laughs> you really well, want I a much chicken. I but but I, like, I, like, I really like the idea of um, uh, you know, giving a, a couple um, slashes with the sword and then, you know, shooting with a... Uh, uh, sort of shotgun thing. Thank God the McRib is back. Yeah, it's terrible. I like your thought <laughs> process. I like where you're going, dude. This was a lot better. Keep at. I like them. I like where you're going, Mr. Jisba. You're the art director here. What do you think? Thoughts. Um, yeah, I definitely, I think they definitely need the uh, robotic joints around the hips and shoulders, but other than that, I think it's a pretty good design. Um, yeah, I like the other one too, but I think the other one also needs the robotic stuff around the joints, just so it doesn't look like it's running at you in a speedo, even though that would be really intimidating. I don't think it, I don't think it'd work out. <laughs> Uh, rough uh, crowd tonight, Wolf. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> they they mentioned the lingerie, and that's the first place my mind went to when I looked at the other one too. We still love you, Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> we we really do. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Mr. Wolf? No, nah, that's it. It's like, screw you all, I'm taking my toys and I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> all right, who's next then? Uh, Nick, did you have anything besides the hype map? Uh, I, I actually did some paper and pencil stuff, I just haven't gotten around to scanning it yet. Like, I did a turret concept and a, uh, there's something else in my sketchbook. Maybe it was just a turret concept. I wish I could say. Oh, oh no, I did a, I did like a mech robot concept. I'll probably post from the Dropbox later, or I could run and do it now. You should do that now. Oh, okay, you can do that now, and we we can go to me, and then you can show those two after that. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna take a look at the height map that I'll run and scan it. Whatever. All right. Just make sure you make give your mech a bra. Oh man, I am so <laughs> tempted. I'm gonna have to sit down and like pencil that in first. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bra, a mech bra. We don't, we don't, we don't want this to be crude. <laughs> Too late. Alrighty, Nelson, if you'll grab me, please. I'll grab you. Grab you hard. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there's the edge. <clears throat> All right, here. Let's see. Vincent's here. Mm -hmm. He popped in to say hi at some point. I don't know that he's still here. You can use these plants if you have eye problems. <laughs> Glaucoma? Anyone? Yeah. Just working around on my next VTM and was thinking about the MMO class and was thinking about a kind of uh, very sharp bladed Ooh, it's pipe plant. Sure. So I was playing around with that and creating an alpha for it. And 
So there's that, and uh, then this is the map that uh, Nick put up. And so I grabbed that and pulled it into CryEngine. You got all that, this <laughs> and that? Nice. Listen. Dang, Nick. That, that's his map. F and A, dude. Nice. Long live CryEngine. Ow, I hurt myself. Stinking humans. So yeah, it was a pretty cool little map he came up with. I didn't have time to throw any buildings up here, and frankly, CryEngine doesn't have any appropriate ones anyway. So That's still pretty darn cool. So Nelson, hey, we, we have a rough map. Can you like implement this now? <laughs> I can implement it, but not now. He left. <laughs> this is really nice. I like the plants. That's all just stuff in CryEngine. Yeah, I was going to say, I assume it's standard CryEngine plants. Now, to, to get a map that we can just play around with, is this what you're wanting to do, Mr. Nato? Um, Sorry. It's more getting the actual system together to, to base, to, to sort of test the numbers. Um, obviously a map system would be, sort of, a map would be required to test on in some way, shape, or form, but it's not kind of my... Yeah, I mean, we don't have to have a pretty map with the water running through it and all that so much as a map that we can test the mechanics on. Mm. I mean, even the, even the couple maps that... Uh, Nelson already did for the first test is fine initially I would think right. I mean at first it's more about the the mechanics between the players correct yeah mm -hmm. yeah but so there you go that's what I have to be uh, a subject matter nice I'm liking CryEngine more and more uh, it's neat, like all engines. It's it's got its ups and downs, but it's, it's, it's nice to see some... UDK. <laughs> Say what? Says someone who recently started using UDK. <laughs> actually, I used UDK for a long time. Uh, this is the one I actually had to go learn. So <laughs> I didn't know a thing about CryEngine three months ago. Fair enough. Now he's an expert. Um, it's it's got some things that I like better than UDK, and it's got some things I don't. Tell tell me the top three things about CryEngine. Um, I I really like that it has voxel terrain, uh, which basically means the ability to make land bridges and overhangs and caves, which you can't do in UDK. Really? Why not? I mean, just... um, UDK only supports height maps, and you can't do caves with a height map, obviously. Obviously. Um, obviously. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Tiger blood winning. Um, I, I, I like the interface better than UDKs, um, especially for somebody just starting out with game engines. It's a lot easier to find your way around. Everything in UDK is a lot deeper, generally. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's about it. Uh, their oceans are really good. <laughs> yeah, now, we those, those are the game, two really games, games takes place on, you know, in on on an island or something. So it's kind of important to have good water. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask about game mechanics because uh, obviously the water's flowing, and it would be a lot better if we didn't have this lag. But are we going to have water that will be flowing in this game, or will that create too much lag on the engine. Uh, the lag you're seeing now will be because of the encoding to transfer over the net, right. not locally. So it's coming through at 10, like 10 frames a second because it's going to uh, go to webinar. Yeah, but I mean, if in, in, in the game, do we want to have flowing water and stuff like that? Well, I'm sure uh, places you will. I don't, yeah. I don't see it being an issue as far as the game is concerned because really 
any graphics that deal with conveying the idea of flowing water is going to be handled client side. True, true that. And I'd love to see like rainstorms and, and thunderclouds and all that sort of stuff and some of the maps as well. Will we be able to do that? Yeah, rain's just a particle effect. That's not terribly hard. Says a guy who doesn't know Unity well at all. But. <laughs> All right. Rain, well, rain's not terribly hard, right, Nelson? Rain is doable. <laughs> rain's very doable. We just don't want that bunny to drown. Is that rabbit's dynamite? That that rabbit is dynamite. Let's All see right, well here. done. Are you playing with your game? Uh, take like what you used to get on me about the Unity tutorials. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, take somebody else's screen. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants the screen? Mr. J, you, you ready? He probably ran away to go scan that stuff. All right, who else has got some stuff we can look at? I'd like to say yes, but I'm stuck at work, so it'll have to wait till next week. Gotcha. Well, I got one more uh, pic I can show you guys as well. Go and take my screen. No. Pretty please. And for the record, Nelson, I yelled at you about it because you told me to yell at you about it. <laughs> <laughs> the first three times, I was like, wow, that is really cool. I'll just watch him. Another idea, because uh, the Alethians and rock creatures and stuff, I've had this for a while. I'm not really super happy about the legs. I like the haunches, but not the, the front legs. Uh, instead of the hyena-looking thing, making these the melee creatures even more rock-like. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I like the, the rock light uh, stuff. I liked the... Um, head of the other thing better than that one. But okay. I do so like I might be able to do is start well, building. There's, there's no saying you can't have both. True. Or Rock just a, or just a different head. I, I'm not those. crazy about that head. The other one. Well, this was this kind of the broad beast thing that Chelsea did the. Yeah. So we have a couple different looks of it. And then also, it, like, if you're if you're able to um, to uh, kind of buff up your uh, kind of level up your uh, your minions, then there could be one that starts the um, like how you had it before, and then is kind of upgraded with armor and then they have all this rock stuff on them. That's a good idea. Anyway, here's some rock plates on them. I do like the other one. I, I could see that as a bigger, badder NPC, whereas these could be uh, like lower level pack NPCs like the wolves are in some of the games. There we go there. There's some more rock on them. Yay, rocks! I have to put that in here. I uh, know. With all those rocks, it kind of kind of makes it look like he's wearing a bra. But maybe that's just me. <laughs> Not that I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We got some lace panties. <laughs> now you got yourself a creature. Oh, some dear. garter hose. <laughs> oh dear. How's that? Intimidating. There the pants go all the way across 
and down and around, you just can't really tell it. If that thing walks up to the door and says housekeeping, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Do you want me to leave a chocolate mint on your pillow? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. Oh, by the way, Wolf, you said you have ten finished pages. Yeah, there's we have Are they all like they all colored up and everything? Uh, I don't know if they're all lettered up. Because I only see five in the Dropbox, which means Maybe. I don't have the other five. <laughs> which I guess means that they're not lettered up. But they're all colored. You know, I, uh, I've finished the... Well, Derek, looks like you got some lettering to do. I can do that in Manga Pro or Manga Studio, whatever the program is called. I'm back. Yeah, okay. Hold on, wait. You missed this because I did this partially for you. Hold on. <laughs> Where are you at? Huh? Some garter belts for you. Oh man, that is pretty hot. What the heck is a lip file? What's a lip file? I don't know. That's Manga Studio. Yeah. Oh. Because I, I need somebody to convert those to uh, JPEGs then. Not JPEGs. <clears throat> Sorry. Or you can convert straight to PSD or Photoshop, whatever. What are the other ones? Generic non, or well, generic lossless format. Some description, anything but uh, anything but JPEG, basically. Well, the first six pages are JPEGs. No, <laughs> they shouldn't be JPEGs. They should be PNGs. Industrial robot. Yeah, just playing around while you guys, uh, Mr. Jay's getting his stuff ready. Hey, my stuff is ready. They're just pencil sketches, so they're already up and open. Is, is number five still alive? <laughs> huh? I got Short it. Circuit movie <laughs> reference. I All right, that, was, that, was, that was fairly obscure time-wise. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of, if you look at kind of the legs, if you, it looks, the top ones, it looks like it's, you put it on some kind of tank type thing at the bottom. Or tank, yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of seeing the Cylon, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Definitely the head, yeah. I'm just doodling. Go ahead and take Mr. Uh, J-String. Platform shoes. <laughs> With fish, fish in it. Nice. Shoes that big and be sharp. So which screen are you guys seeing? The 3D Buzz one or the other one? 3D, 3D Buzz. Buzz. There we go. So that, that was my idea for a turret. Um, made it all big and articulated so it could swing around and look all intimidating. Uh, that would be intimidating. I wouldn't want to be on the other end of that. I, I like the smoothie 70 sci-fi lines. Good job. Thank you. And then, what else was there? Then there's the robot that's kind of hard to see because they did it real light. That reminds me of some of the Battletech stuff, which is kind of good. So, like, I figured it'd be short with, like, spindly arms, and then you'd attach, like, some sort of, like, chainsaw or a gun to its head, and then it would attack you that way. That's a cool idea. I, I will say it looks like it has a mini gun for another region. <laughs> <laughs> we could also do that, and that would make me laugh for days. <laughs> Especially if uh, the belt chain's hanging down. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be pretty good. Oh. Kind of puts my Rob so design wrong. into perspective, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. <laughs> <what you're wrong. laughs> Do you remember uh, 
what was it? Uh, crap. Go Autobots. Uh, Transformers, the movie, the, the Wrecking Ball guy. Did you, did you see that? <laughs> yeah. The new stuff? It's like the second movie where maybe yeah, it's the third movie. One. So the first where one. his the wrecking balls hung down between the dude's legs and it's like really you you had to do that did some art director go let's make this huge phallic symbol right here for kids yeah. to look at awesome that is pretty classy um, right, I like it though yeah I started doodling and then I was just like oh that could be a turret and then I'm just like I should scan that in and use it for concept art that's that's cool. Are you gonna throw those in the Dropbox? Uh, yeah. I just threw them in the wrong folder. I'll move them. Awesome. Sweet. Okay. So, what was this about putting a level into uh, uh, whatever the game engine was that's slipping my mind right now? Cry engine. You already showed that. Yeah. Where where were you? We've, we've moved on. Scanning, oh. scanning stuff. No, you, you saw that, didn't you, Nick? No, I might have been gone by the time you you showed that because I was the just water? Like, I hurry. Oh, I thought I heard you say something. Huh. Huh. Alrighty, well, Nelson, I guess you can take mine back, and I can show Nick his level and grind it. How agonizingly repetitive. No, it's horrendous. I'm such a miscreant. Here you go, buddy. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Did you know that you had height ma mapped all those trees like that? I, I did. I was completely planned. <laughs> the water is the most impressive. Yeah, I really hype map that water well. I said, man, Nick needs to make more maps if it's this easy. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> can you crank out a couple of these? As Nelson said, he can implement them in no time at all. Yeah, I could. Those are those are ridiculously easy to do. Like, I just I wasted more time trying to like make it into a file that needed was more complex than it needed to be. Well, however it ended up, man, it uh, it pulled into this nice and easy. Yeah, because uh, I think UDK is just harder to pull files into than Unity or apparently CryEngine. Well, I... Uh, height maps for landscapes, yeah, that tends to be a bit pissy, but in general it's not too bad. Oh, yeah, like, uh, I had no, no trouble with, like, normal textures. It was just the height map. It required some bizarre file format. Like, I couldn't just import a JPEG. Yeah, have it, it means, like, that. a 16-bit raw file or something. Well, I tried importing a 16-bit raw file, and it had to be, like, filtered specifically, so I had to oh, open into another yeah. program to filter yeah. the 16-bit thing. It needs to be a particular size as well because of the way height maps work. Um, yeah, like I, I picked up, I went through all the stuff and I like remade the map four or five different times and it didn't work from Photoshop, so I had to get this other program to put it into Unreal. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. There's your third thing. I like how easily height maps come into this here. Yeah, good. I'm glad, I'm glad it worked out. Take my screen real quick and I'll show screen. you the wrecking ball thing and we'll talk about what we're going to do next week. Of course, we're not going to be using... Uh, cry engine. No, no, we're not. <laughs> I was but looking at Unity and it said, it or not. <laughs> "Yeah, <laughs> Unity right. apparently is easier easier than UDK too." Just looking at it, so that's why I sort of stopped where I was at. All right, so this is the wrecking UDK ball. Was designed to work with that particular model of uh, train. Sorry, Karen. Yeah, th th this is Mr. J's. Sure enough, uh, look at that. <laughs> yeah. He's bent down and he's got balls between. Nice. Yeah. Nothing says Michael Bay like big balls. I believe it. So, actually, this is a pretty cool concept piece right here as well. I like that. And there's, I mean, that's some great detail in that. I think, <clears throat> is this what? This is what I would assume that you're talking about, the big industrial type beefy robot looking things that looks like it's meant, you know, to, to do work. Now, minus like the gears and you can tell obviously that uh, 
those are vehicles that's been transformed. Yeah, I mean, definitely more streamlined than that, but yeah, that kind of heavy mechanical industrial look. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Cool, so uh, what's next week's assignment for the art team? I say we concentrate on the robots. What do you guys think? Uh, hard surface modeling is certainly easier than character. That's a good place to start. Um, environment stuff is still good. Um, I'm going to try to get that turret I drew modeled. Okay. Um, I mean, you can start if we model some stuff like that, too, in the robots, we can use components from the robots to come up with a junk for the human side, just the stuff we have lying in the ground. Like we just pull components off and throw them into the dirt. Good idea. Now, just to be as clear as mud, whenever we're, we're box modeling something like this, all the gears and stuff, it's okay to be separate geometry. They can be parented to bones, correct? They don't have to be all one solid piece. Yeah, they can be separate geometries so long as they're uh, not going so. through anything. Uh, even these days you can get away with that, but the cleaner the better, yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Then uh, that's what I want to do. I'm, I, my goal next week, depending if the art director, Mr. Jisba, says it's okay, I'm going to try to come up with like three or four industrial type robots for us to look at as well with Mr. Wolf's help. Sounds like a plan to me. Okay, and you're going to model the turret, which would be freaking awesome to see that come to life. Yeah. I suppose... Oh, go, oh ahead. go ahead. Oh. I suppose that uh, I could try an experiment and see uh, if I could come up with uh, some kind of robot without a bra. That... Uh, <laughs> To see, I mean, it's, it sounds crazy, but to see if that's or, or you know, go the other way. I evening gown yeah. the whole nine yards. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about an evening gown. Maybe a teddy. A teddy on the next one would be better. <laughs> Leave Wolf alone. You guys are gonna make me cry. All right. Okay, uh, the way I see it, when Wolf shoots back, no one can complain. <laughs> yep, that is true. Very true. Just know I'm on your side, Wolf, so don't make me cry. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's what I'll be doing. Uh, anything else? I know design t team uh, will be talking about a separate date or at least two weeks apart for that. So we got a lot of art stuff to do next week. Um, I'm going to bring in at least three to four robots, and then we may actually open it up where we can take turns uh, building off these robots and, and drawing, you know, in, in class and really refining these things, if that's good with everybody. Nick, do you have any kind of uh, job schedule constraints? I work 8.30 to 5.30 every day. 8.30 to 5.30? All right. Um, why don't we say, like, uh, design side will do two weeks at 7 p.m. Central on Tuesdays? I'm happy to come in to this class every um, every other week. And just do a just do a short thing. Well, my, just, my like only we are now, but every two weeks is, is would be. My only concern is something I've been talking to Derek about is it, I think we may have lost some of the art people because of the time we spend on design. Hmm. So it's it's been in my head to separate those out anyway. Fair enough. So, so if uh, that works for at least us three or four for the moment, then we'll do two weeks on Tuesday at, uh, wait, uh, are you on Central Time, Nick? Yeah, I'm on Central Time. That seven works just fine. All right. We'll do that, and that has you up one hour less late, Chris. That works for me. <laughs> and we'll go from there. We'll see how that works out, and we'll modify as we need. All right, sounds like a plan. I'll be calling you tomorrow, Mr. Steve, to, to hash out whatever you need to do, and we'll throw up some ideas and uh, make a proposal for, for Jason to look at to see what he can, he can come up with and what uh, ultimately he decides. Okie dokie. Um, and Derek, hop on uh, Skype after class so I can send okay. you some stuff. I will be there, my friend. All right. 
then we'll call it tonight. Well done, guys. Uh, again, we're, we're crawling here, but we're still moving forward, and that's important. So thank you, everybody, for being a part of this class tonight. Uh, until next time, keep your feet on the ground and your ankles slightly above them, and keep dreaming big. Oh, yeah, one of these days we'll be going so hard trying to get stuff done on time, we'll be looking back and now going, oh, God, I wish it was like that again. <laughs> I agree. I, <laughs> and, it, and I'm a little scared about that as well. All right, Mr. Fifty Shades and Nelson, take us out. We're done. <laughs>